<laughs> now, we all know Mark Burris is uh, the tough, tough talking well, boss. Tough. To the top talking top for a celebrity apprentice. Now the money maker guru is here to give us some tips on how to be a millionaire by the time we retire. Mr. Boris, Mr. thank Boris. you for coming on. Good morning. Now, uh, the average Aussie needs a million bucks to retire comfortably. That's just at the moment. I mean, that might go up. Well, that definitely will go up if, yeah. you, if you add inflation to it and the cost of things are going to go up over the next 10, 20 years. But we all fall today, short, though, don't we? We all fall short. Um, but you can do it. It's not difficult to do. But you've got to set your mind to it, and you've got to understand what your task is. What does a million dollars get you in retirement per year? Um, a butler? Well, it doesn't <laughs> no. get you a butler, unfortunately. No, because um, you have to live off the interest of the money, don't you? That's right. And a million dollars, assuming you live for another 20 years, which is a fair assumption, will give you $56,000 a year. See? Yeah. What do you mean, see? Well, see, it's not a lot, is it's it? You think a million dollars is a lot of money, but it doesn't give you a not lot. Enough. That pays perhaps a bit of rent if, you, if you're not fortunate enough to own your own home. It certainly pays your medical bills, a bit of food, puts a bit of petrol in your car. It doesn't give you the, the holiday that you've always been hanging out for. You can't for go on a cruise for 56000 a year and still live well? You can't go on a cruise for 56000 You can't go anywhere. You, you won't be cruising anywhere. You won't be walking outside your house. You might be going up the road to the shop. To the shop. So what's the, pro what's the problem? Why do we all kind of like fall behind when it comes to things like super? It's because we feel like it's not our money, right? It's like it's the government's taking it and we don't really have any access to it. And Well, we feel like we don't earn it because it never comes into our account and goes out of our account. It goes straight from our employer direct to our fund. I think it would be better if we receive the money and then we're compelled to actually draw the same amount of money or more out of our wages every week, every month, mm -hmm. and put it into our super fund. Especially for younger people, they don't even think they own the superannuation money, but yeah. they are working for it. Yeah. It is 9% of their gross effort for the week. But what about, like, okay, is it easier for, like, there's some of us out there who don't earn as much. I mean, I, I, you know, is it easier if you're like Sonia Kruger and you're earning her money? I mean, how can the rest of us, you know, sort of compete with that and get a million bucks by our retirement? Well, I think the first... Yeah, person... Son's on 10 million a year. <laughs> Just wanted to contractually, I'm obliged to say Sonia that. will That's retire very true. comfortably. <laughs> And, and Sonia certainly is not a representation of all females in, in Australia, that's she for sure. She certainly isn't. I'm sure she's heard that before. <laughs> this is getting awkward. <laughs> Between two men. <laughs> but, but the point being here is, if you acknowledge how much you do have to have on the day you retire, if you go and see some, sit down with somebody and say, OK, how much do I have to put away and or earn over the next however long it is before you retire, then you can actually set up a plan. But you've got to have something to work towards mm. to have a plan in the first place. Goals. 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 Is that your secret? Goals. Um, also, can I ask you, interest rates, record lows, what do you do? Do you fix or do you not fix? Because you hear people sort of say, do it now because they're set to go up again. What's your take? My view on it, my view on it nobody has ever beaten the market. So when you decide to fix your rate, you're outplaying, trying to outplay the banks. You are trying to take risk out of the system. They deal with it better than you do. You'll never outbeat the banks, so you you never beat the banks. So don't try to beat them. Stay variable. Take advantage of the lower rates as they come through over the next 12 months. If you're lucky, you should be fixing your rates before they start to go up. Right. They're on their way down, though. Mr. Boris, can I ask you, what is your grooming process? Because you are <laughs> so handsome. A very in attractive life. man. Is it moisturiser? <laughs> Do you get up, do you stay out of the sun? Is it SP30? SP30? Uh, it's actually the Channel 9 makeup room. Ah, <laughs> oh, hey, smooth. You should have seen Mr. me before Boris, I went in there. You should have seen Mr. me five Boris, minutes ago. David was impersonating you this morning. No, I wasn't. I heard about no, this, by no. the way. Do you want to see it? Oh, yeah, let's see have it? a look. Go on, go on. No, it's, it's, no, because you're really good at <laughs> We need a close up on David so he can do the impersonation of Mr. Boris. <clears throat> okay. <I'll> go. <laughs> Dara Raritan. Defied. <laughs> what do you reckon? He would have been terrified. <laughs> Do the eyebrows again. There you go. Now have a look at Mr. Boris's eyebrows because they're kind of similar. Mm. <laughs> you're like my actually you're like my grooming idol. <laughs> New grooming idol. Oh, can we also ask you about the apprentice? Yeah, let's talk about last night. Blue was on between Roxy oh, and time. Prue. Jeez. You know what Dermot said this morning on the Today Show? He said that he fed you the fire line. Is that true, or did you know you were going to fire him? I knew I was going to fire him. But what Derm Dermot's quite smart. Dern was actually throwing himself under the bus, giving me the opportunity to fire him. Mm -hmm. um, now, whether he knew he was... He knows television pretty good. I mean, he's been around a long time. Yeah, yeah. Knows how to play a game. So Dermot knew he was well and truly in the firing line. So he set it up for himself. Now, I'm the one who makes the calls. 
I'm, I nearly thought to myself, I did think to myself at one stage, I might just hold him here just to, just to know, square, up, square up with him. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, he's been squaring up to me the, the whole show. dirty double cross, yeah. yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, he was the appropriate person to get. And he Roxy, she's a bit of the dark, I mean, she's been a bit of the dark horse. No one knew what was going in, and we, we all know her here, but I guess the general public didn't know who she was. She's been the real surprise of this show. Oh, she's smart, really. and she's ruthless. You reckon she's going to win? Do I reckon she's going to win? I know who wins. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not going to get it out of me now. Nothing gets past Mr. Mark Boris. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Boris. Come in any time, mate. It was great Thank to you. see you. Coming up, cute as a button, we meet the baby Loris. So tiny, he weighs as much as two tablespoons of sugar. Mark Loris. <laughs> First is Paul. If you're like me, the day is never long enough. There never seems to be enough hours in the day, enough time with the family, enough petrol in the car, or enough pats on the back from the boss. Do I have enough is an important consideration when it comes to lots of the day-to-day